Friday Night Racing on Off The Ball brought to you by Go Racing plan your day at the races at goracing.ie and you're very welcome along to Friday Night Racing. We're here with you every Friday afternoon, live across all of our social channels, streaming at 3 o'clock on youtube.com forward slash off the ball, facebook.com forward slash off the ball, and of course on Twitter and on Periscope as well. And then if you missed that, don't worry, you can always get us on the radio every Friday evening from 8 o'clock. Dennis Hogan is our special guest this week. Dennis, you're very welcome. Thanks very much for coming into us. Thank you, Joe. Yep, uh, pleasure. Also with us is Johnny. Johnny, how are you? Yeah, he's come all the way from New York to join us here. Very good. Yeah, literally of, straight from the plane. A bit of jet lag? Yeah, well, a little bit, uh, Jerry. It's, it's been a long day, actually. Yeah, we've been. It's kind of yesterday, is it? Yeah, into today we've we've been home from Shannon to home, gabbed a few. We really watched two lots at home, and we gabbed a couple of horses on the corridor there um, before I got up here. So uh, yeah, it's a uh, sleep tonight. Was that um, pure pleasure, or was there a bit of work involved? Or um, no, it was actually originally uh, I was I was supposed to be over on last Saturday for for a Tipperary GA ball. Right. That was on, and uh, I was disappointed to miss it. But we had such a, a good uh, bunch of horses run the weekend, and and a couple of the, mar the good mares were running. So I, I stayed around, and we changed flights to Monday, and, and came back this morning. So. Um, so you were going to go over for a ball. You couldn't make the ball, but you went over to New York anyway. We went anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Johnny, we don't. That is my type of logic, actually. <laughs> to be fair, like <laughs> yeah, any time of year in New York's a good time to go. Like. Yeah, for sure. But we didn't. Uh, it's our, our our season has changed a lot because um, I suppose when I was just riding, uh, the summer was always the time for a holiday and uh, even when I started training it was always just uh, that that time in the summer would get quite but um, uh, now that we have so many flat horses and the sails, the jump sails run through all the quiet periods for jumping and it's just never ending, you know. Yeah. Well, so, so, I, I, so this is the the central part of this conversation should be you're the hardest working man in uh, in horse racing. So you don't have an off season. This is <laughs> no, like like you don't. You literally don't actually. But look, at, it's great way to be. But uh, you can make you make a bit of time around again. It takes a bit of planning though. I'd say so. To, yeah. To get even to get a few hours off in the day is hard. But uh, for for people who aren't uh, full blown horse racing aficionados, you are a jockey and a trainer. Yeah, that's correct. There's uh, a curious blend of madness in that. But they say like At you shouldn't be time. a player manager anymore, that you can't do both, and yeah. you're probably one of the only... There is a kind of a parallel there. You're probably one of the only few that really does it like. Yeah, it's, 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 um, it's different, very different, actually. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, there's two sides to it, obviously. But we, like, I'm not riding them all anymore. We have a lot of flat horses and a few pointers and... Um, like it's not the end of the world nowadays if I don't ride one, but I do like to ride them, and yeah. I'm not looking for spares in in the beginners' chases anymore. Or anything, but at the same time, if a going to ride came up, I take it, you know. Yeah. But uh, I really enjoy the riding, and um, obviously it's hard to juggle too. But I have a great team of staff, and that's what makes it like just to get a few days away. And even tonight, like um, they're going headed up to Dundalk there, and like they they know the drill better than myself, and like I nearly get in the way now when I'm there actually. Um, they're so good at it and a good team at home and do you know there's, there's nothing missed Why don't we start at the start um, the bit where you decide you want to be a jockey because you're not from a stereotypical traditional racing background are you? No no but um, grew up uh, farming background but grew up very next door to Charlie Swan Okay and uh, it, it kicked off from there he opened the riding school I think just was he finished riding no he was still riding but he he opened the riding school and, and Myself and my sister would have started riding lessons there, and I went from there into the race horses and pony racing, and it stepped on a bit further. You know? This is like 12, 13, 14, that age, kind of yeah. the impressionable age when you're like, Yeah, this is what I want to do. And it's not like, you know, Charlie Swan was unbelievably famous at that stage in Irish sports culture. Like, yeah. When we didn't have a load of Cheltenham winners, any of the Cheltenham winners we had, it was like, Wow, that's a celebrity, basically. And it was this a a lot of the time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like Charlie was a national legend at the time and I suppose then being local to us, we always followed him and it it built a bit from there and, and, and I managed to get a job with him. He started me off in racing. He then got me a job at Michael Halford on the Curra, which I learned a lot and that was that was massive benefit to my career. Were you even thinking then about training or No, uh. no, at the time but uh I did in them years keep ponies for pony racing and I would have trained them as well. Mm. Um, got a lot of help from Charlie and a lot of the lads in the yard. And from there, 
Um, no, I didn't think I really enjoyed working in McAlford's on the Curra. We're in Pollard's down then, and he's old, yeah. But um, did that make you think more? Like, geez, I wouldn't mind doing this. Like, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I was like, still to this day, I think uh, Michael Halford is a like international top trainer. Mm. He's like, he's um, just the way he done in them in them years. He had horses who he had a lesser type of horse in them years. Like that's twelve years ago. Um, and like there was horses there, you'd think, God, he's not going to win much, but but Mick would chip away, chip away. Gradual improvement. Gradual improvement. And he'd end up winning with horses. We would have thought, God, it shouldn't be in training. Mm. And he, he would get them horses to win. They're the horses that are hard, hard to win with, but he would, he showed me how to train a moderate horse. That's the thing as well, yeah. Joe, because if you're, say if you're a 0 to 60 horse, the, the lowest grade, the races you're entered in, first of all, it's hard to get in because the most horses in Ireland are the worst. So basically, first of all, you have to get in and then you'll rock up in Dundalk and it's a 14-runner handicap or you'll go to Navin and it's a 20-runner handicap. And the horses of moderate ability, they, they, I think that's where trainers really make their make, make a show whether they're good or not, where they can get a moderate horse to produce um, because you, you have so little in hand. And then to be able to improve them, and I think um, the hor- anyone can train a good horse, but like a lot of trainers can train bad horses and he obviously could. Yeah, it, it opened my eyes actually. I was and the horses would always be kept. They would always look super, and they're always fresh and healthy, and everything was clean and tidy in the yard. And it just it it set me up for training. I knew when I was going to go training, this I'm going to base it on what I learned here. The details of of the bits that people kind of assume or take for granted or don't do. Yeah, exactly. And uh, what was what was he doing though? How was he turning the? Um, I think the biggest thing back then was um, backward two year olds, backward three year olds. Uh, Mick would wait. He 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 give them time to develop. When you say backward, you mean they're born at the uh, end of the year? Yeah, well, say they weren't fully developed. Okay. And and he he just keep chipping away when others might have casted them off. And, he and d- that means just continuously training them, but not producing them for races yeah, not, until they're not, ready. Not going not going into into fifth gear too too soon, okay. and gradually getting them there. Next thing, they're strong enough, and and they've got into a grade where they're able to compete, and they can climb the ladder from the from the bottom rather than. But, but say, say you've an owner, right? So you've a backward two-year-old or a backward three-year-old, but you've an owner who maybe he wants to see the horse run or he wants to see something for his 1,200 quid a month or whatever it is. So how, how do you tell him, listen, I, I really would advise just taking your time with this horse and the owner's like, well, I, I want to see my horse run. I want a day out. Like, Yeah, it's, that's another side to the job, Johnny, to be honest. It's, uh, diplomacy, like. Yeah, it's another side to the job. Um, like, um, it's, it's hard to tell someone... Um, I like your horse, but um, he mightn't see the winner's enclosure if he sees the winner's enclosure for two years. Right. Um, it's it's a hard thing to do, but some of, some of the 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 say the old school owners that have been around for years, they know the, they know the job and they'll, they'll take the good with the bad. Some will make it, some won't. Generally, if they've been if they've been through the mill, they they know the the, the run of it. But uh, yeah, it's a hard, it's a hard one to to we'll say deal them like. Do you speak in code or do you just tell them the truth straight out? Do you like learn a language around this? Well, you know, this one here. Be honest, Dennis. It's a grower. <laughs> it's uh, he's a trier. It's a tough job, actually. I was thinking about that today, actually. Um, How many horses you get are no good? God, percentage a, wise. Percentage wise, we go through plenty. To be honest, Johnny, it's hard to put a figure on it. But um, there's no good. There's moderate, and there's average. Mm. You know, moderate's a dangerous place. Mm. Because they're showing a hint of ability not to stop, but at the same time, they're going to put you in a dangerous area where you're finishing midfield and the hint to win the race and the trip can't be figured out. They're generally not much good. Right. Well, it's a waste of time. You. It's a waste of everybody's time. But are you, would you be the type of the owner that, like, listen, I, I'm not going to keep a horse on this? We've been so lucky. We've been so lucky since I started with five horses. Every year we've had more and more horses offered to us, so we're always able to keep moving out the ones we don't want. Mm. Which it's it's a great it's a it's great for the air because we're we're constantly building up a stronger team of horses. Whereas if we were looking for numbers to keep, well, we'd probably try and keep going with lesser stuff. But um, it's great that we have a, a constant flow of youngsters coming mm. and and we're able to keep shipping out what what we think won't make the grade. You know? It's unfortunate that there are simply a lot of trainers who will keep moderate horses more or less to keep themselves. 
um, afloat, really. Yeah. Like, and it's it's sad, and it probably shouldn't happen, but it's true, it does happen. And uh, I think if you're an owner, you have to identify the trainer that will be honest with you and will we'll say from the get-go, uh, this is basically, it's not worth your while. Yeah, so what do you do in that case if you're an owner? So like, stick no, that's fine. Hand. You you, you, you don't want if you if you had two year, if you had two years of paying training fees for a moderate horse, you're talking twenty grand for something that's not worth tuppence, right? So yeah. it's just like, listen, you, you might have lost four or five grand in this, but move on. You could pick up a horse for three grand that'll actually do a job, but I would advise that you move on. Do you know, and, and and that's I would appreciate that honestly, like yeah, for sure. Like like at the end of the day, at the end of the day, a moderate or no good horse is no good to me, my staff, or my owners. Yeah. Because he's only going to sour the owners off ever having a horse again. Yeah. Uh, the staff... You end up looking bad because yeah. there's a hint of talent, but actually he can't <laughs> deliver. And to be honest, like, who wants to get up in the morning <laughs> the work that goes into to put that kind of work into yeah. a middle of the road to no good? Um, it's a lot easier to get out of bed when you know they're decent, you know? Yeah. In, in, without getting into the British-Irish kind of dichotomy, in Britain, you, you might be able to win with him. You won't in Ireland. It's just way too competitive. So yes. then do you want to go over to England, hopefully win a bad race, the owner might back it, you're paying, obviously, transport fees for very bad prize money. So if you roughly, you go, an owner will get back 20% of what he puts in in terms of uh, prize money in statistically or thereabouts so that's like 80 percent obviously lost so you, that's the reality of it so you, nobody gets into own, uh, owning racehorses with their eyes kind of closed they know they're not going to make it but um with moderate horses it's a lot worse than 80 percent so you just get rid and, and move on right yeah. you know, it's, it's 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 tough but that's how it is or should be could we go back to the bit where um you, you get your first job and then you move to the current you're a jockey and out and a jockey at that point you start as a flat jockey is that right that's correct jerry all i want to be was a jockey back then um, but I, I did I did it always interested me what the trainers were doing with horses and riding work for so many different trainers you'd always be intrigued to know they'd all do something different yeah and over the years I always tried to, you took something from everyone but uh, you wrote a lot of work on some can I ask you about that the specifics of, of what they do differently because um, like it's it's kind of a bit secret, but it's not that secret what everybody does, really. Because like, they, they, they're not doing... I don't know, it, it seems like nobody's actually reinventing the wheel. They just have their own little take, and some of it seems yeah. to be instinctive about the days when you put the horse in fifth gear and how close that is to a race. Yeah. And, um, and how you correlate that and how you produce them at the right moment. There's a, there's a bit of mysticism about it. There is. A, every, every outfit is nearly some bit different. Um, like... I think I think uh, if you find something that works for you, and you know you have the first thing you have to do is get to know your gaps. So if if once you get to know your gaps and what you can do and what leaves them with some left in the tank and not the race left at home, but equally has them fit enough to compete. Um, I think once you know, once you know your gaps and your setup, you can you can work around it. You know, uh, but every trainer is every trainer does something different because their gaps vary, their horses vary. Um, some lads like to keep them fresh, do short and quick work. There's more trainers like to do loads of mileage and stamina. There's, there's a big like there's a. There can be a massive difference by all accounts. There, like. there is, there yeah. is definitely yeah. from yeah. from yeah. one trainer, trainer to another. Like I, I, I heard of one trainer who gallops his horses over like a mile and a half more or less, like proper proper slow galloping. Um, where most trainers would probably work them quicker, but like they wouldn't go too fast, like, they wouldn't go too far rather yeah. to keep them that bit fresh. Like, but I I'll go back to that point about Willie Mullins. I remember talking about a horse one day that was this a horse that was well exposed, and he said, I'm, "I haven't galloping today. I just want to see what I, what I'm going to do with him trip wise." And I was like, "This horse has run for 30, 40 times. Like, it's all there in the racing post in front of you. What he's done." And he he was like, "No, I just want to see him with my own eyes." And I was just like. That's Willie Mullins because I, I don't. I think a lot of trainers are just like, well, they know what he is. Yeah. Willie wanted, and I don't think you can train that or you can teach that either. Like, because he'll see something somebody else won't. That's that's it really. And and like, at the end at the end of the day, you can. I've seen it done every way. I've seen it done short, quick, loads of warming up, very little warming up. Um, train them inside, outside. I've seen them done in all sorts of ways. And at the end of the day, if the horse hasn't the engine. Yeah, you, you you can't you can't bring him small stuff. You can change a couple of lengths here and there, but at the end of the day, I've seen it done every way. But um, you, you do you do need a level of ability. That's to make a thing. The horse needs a, a level. You of do, ability. Yeah, you do. Yeah. And so once you've identified that, and you you see that the horse has that, and you're confident that um, you can work with it. Do you have a set routine 
that you use and that's your style of philosophy or does that change depending yeah, we yeah we we generally we have a routine where we we have them in a pre-training yard for six to eight weeks, depending on how they're going, but or breaking or whatever stage, and it works very well because we're not mixing them with the horses who have been are in training and are racing. So, and everything in in the main yard, my own yard is is um, up to near enough racing level, so they're all on the one page. Okay. So on a Monday, it's, it's very steady away, and 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 Tuesday they're they're doing faster work and different swingers and half speeds and um, Wednesday we do a lot of school and then Thursday is, is nearly back around to Monday again we, we, we step it up towards Friday's fast work and Saturday they're, they're just cantering so And does it matter if there's a race imminent or not? We try and work around runners and Sunday mornings we'll, we'll just have the, the ones running very early in the week Monday, Tuesday that will actually ride out so it's, it, it varies a little but we, we try and keep a routine yeah. How Horse. close to the race can you work them hard without damaging their prospects? We've 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 uh, we've done it different with different horses. Mm. Stuffy horses who might need a blow the day before or yeah. I've heard of evening meetings where well I have done it where evening meetings and, and a stuffy lad ha mm. might have to get a blow that morning. I remember Dermot well telling me how he ran a horse in Laytown twice the same day years ago and um, Dermot only told me that because he, he did win one of the races now but um, I couldn't believe it he ran a horse twice in the same day I think he finished first and third but it's obviously um, yeah. different strokes like different yeah different different for different horses there's other horses who would like to to hit the racetrack fresh and might have issues and just have to be produced fresh and, and if you, and, and you can't run them back quick yeah and we just it's trial and error really you, That's don't, it, uh, you yeah. don't find out until you go to war uh, what's right or wrong for any horse but the longer you have them the more you should learn about them but um, every day is a learning day you know? yeah, and Willie Mullins made an interesting point as well the other day where he said I don't care what the trip is for these horses in maiden hurls and beginners chase I just need to get them out so I was thinking like if you're a punter here and you're looking at well sure Willie knows what the trip is for his horse there was a horse running yesterday in Tremor and I thought the trip would stretch him and he ended up winning um, now he did he kind of just about lasted out but that was in my mind because Willie said that the weekend doesn't care what the trip is this stage of the season he needs his horses to run in their maiden hurdles yeah. so that could be two miles or three miles just to get them fit. Just to get them out, because right. we'll see say as well, in the, at, the, yeah. year we, the year we've had, the ground is still nearly good in Navin and Ferry House this weekend. And this is nearly Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. So that's most of the season is nearly gone at this stage. So it's like, well, what are we going to do here? We need to get these horses out. That's why Willie had a, really had like three or four horses in the maiden hurdle in Tremor yesterday, because he knew he was getting soft ground. Yeah. And he didn't really care what the trip was, and one of them won, the other one was second. Yeah, they, they, they do have to get started at that stage too. We'd often be like that too, just, just get them started. And we know where in or around where they might be about but we need to get them started on the racetrack to learn a bit and for us to learn more too just to bring them forward they have to start somewhere so yeah. I can see why Willie would pitch a few of them I mean he has to get so many of them they have to get out there mm. it's like Jiggenstown running 4 or 5 and they had a 1 to 3 4 5 in the race recently they just need to get the horses out and they know all but one of them at least won't win yeah. how, how many horses would you have in training at any one time? Um, we're we're upwards of sixty at the minute. Um, yeah, we have we're probably going to have room for more in the new year. There's building going on again, and right. we've extended our gallops. We double. We actually put in a whole new gallop this summer. We we widened the gallop we had to double the width it was. Um, it just allows us allows us a bit more room on the bends, and we can work four horses together or three or four horses together and upsides. And it, you work them both both ways around. Yeah, we can travel both ways and. Uh, we uh, we have the use of Charlie Swan's old gallops where we um, have a grass gallop there and we have an uphill school and strips and um, just just plenty of with plenty of different facilities. But um, are you a believer in schooling, or do you kind of let them um, let them I learn think at the track? We, I think once we've we've got them off the ground and we've got them doing the basics and we've got them up to race and pace at home and they have had a run. Um, a pop now and again. We don't overdo the school. And, um, anytime I have done, I've injured one. So that's and that's another thing. So Henry de Bromhead would have a totally different method of schooling than a lot of other trainers who like wouldn't hardly school their horse at all. Whereas Henry would be yeah. like repetition, 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 such that at the end of it, the horse will go into the indoor arena and he'll do it himself. 
Yeah. He doesn't. He actually knows what he's doing himself. Like the cows being milked in the morning, who've been yeah. to the milking parlour so often, they'll just do it and they come from the field. But other trainers will be like, no, no, no. just I'd hardly school them at all. Just let them learn at the track. Henry's, get, are, Henry's are actually a joy to watch. You mm. know, like the rider doesn't have to do much. Mm. Only make sure he's they're on puts autopilot. The, like if they put them into the jumps right, they're generally yeah. nine times out of ten they're fairly good. But you can see that in the school. And then another thing about you know what's with Henry's that. You see, uh, he, he seems to have a lot of good two-milers over the years, and I often see him dropping horses back to two-mile and ride them forward and keeps it simple, and their jumping does the trick. I'd say if you would gain a length of ten fences, that's ten lengths, and that's the win of yeah. a lot of races, like that's even over two sure. miles, you know yeah. that. And because of the quality of the training. Of the jumping, and to see a horse jumping, and like to see a horse like Mengley Can, we'll say, when he met his chase mm-hmm. debut there lately, especially when they're doing the first time, and they just zoom past the horse over a fence, and it just looks like they're hurdling, it just look, it looks so natural to them. That's the thrill of racing for me, like jumps racing. There's nothing like two-mile horses going at speed, mm-hmm. and if you can get up beside the fence yourself at the racetrack, it's exhilarating. And Patrick Mullins, even this week, he had a little video um, of actually, school yeah. and at home, and this, it was like um, basically glasses video, like so you could see exactly what he sees and it was like god almighty that looks like so much fun yeah. you know within <laughs> you were tempted you were no I wasn't <laughs> but I was like that must be some crack over a fence because this yeah. is only over hurdles like, and this is only schooling yeah some crack if they can jump Johnny yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's so much yeah, fun falls. <laughs> but, uh, which is the which is the biggest thrill the bit where you ride a horse to win or the bit where a horse that you've trained and have seen develop and evolve gets past another horse at the finish line of training What's, myself. Yeah. Um, Which yeah. is the biggest thrill? You've the told one. all the owners in the, in the <laughs> handicap herd in Sligo and you get up by your neck. Yeah. yeah. That's we, a help as well. <laughs> We've, uh, yeah, exactly, yeah. When, when a plan comes together... It doesn't matter like, if you're on board or not. No. Or it's known to be shrewd, you know. Well, when a, when a plan comes together, it is, there's, a, there's a great... It makes the job worthwhile, you know. Yeah. But, um, yeah, we've had, over the years, we've had... We've had uh, Plenty of plenty of success, plenty of good successes, like with low grade horses, even who, like we've got as good a kick out of some of them as we do, as we as we do, we'll say a big grade winner or something. We, but like, you know, because them owners are, he's the same to them as as a good horse is to another owner, you know. Yeah. So possibly uh, even more, like because that's all he has. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, whereas Rich Richie has fifty horses. Yeah, exactly. You know, and yeah, most of them are grade one horses, like. Yeah, so. for sure. Yeah, yeah, but um. Well, I suppose a horse that we taught plenty of over the years was Jack DeWire. He's retired now, actually, but um, he was a horse I, go, I thought I'd go a lot further now. But when he came together um, in Galway and onto this stall, the family were there and they owned them. Um, that that was a memorable day. Yeah, yeah that's. Uh, I, yeah. it kind of goes back to the bit that we were talking about where you can see the skill and work in training being made manifest in the results. That's like the, mm. I mean, that's the dream for any manager or The work you put in comes off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a long, like it's, it's a long road to get to where you want to, you know, like you could set out with, spend plenty of money at the sales and buy a nice horse to go forward with and like it mightn't come together for two or three years, but it's When just, it does, yeah. It, it could, it could take that long for, the, for a real nice horse, you know? I, it, the other thing I suppose that, about all of this that um, sometimes we forget, because we're talking about you know, we're talking about this as just a sport, but you, you know, you you put builders on site, you build stuff, you it, make a significant investment. You're a businessman, really, at all this, and you, so you're juggling the sporting side of it as well as being an accountant and a HR manager and all that kind of stuff too. Yeah, it's uh, like uh, our place. Our place can be created. Like this morning, it was very, very busy there. I actually couldn't wait to get out of it because it was, <laughs> it was just like there was. I just have to come was, back from New York. Yeah, I was. I was away, and it was like staff to deal with, there was builders there, there was um, farrier was in shoeing, uh, the vets were there doing doing little jobs and there was horses galloping. Um, there was like orders to be done for different stuff, bedding, feeding, yeah. um, owners to be dealt with, staff to be dealt with. Um, You're like, I could have just been a jockey. Yeah, tra- transport to be organised to go racing, to go to the car galloping. Listen, uh, sorry, I have to go to Dublin. <laughs> and all the rest, like, so, you know? <laughs> it, yeah, it's it's very wild, but at the same time, like you know, when you've got through it in the day, and next thing you have a winner, it's all, like I yeah. I actually really enjoy it. Yeah, and I've a great team of staff. They they get when when the going is the going is tough, they get stuck in, and it's good to see, and and it's good to see them rewarded too. You know. Yeah, it sounds like you kind of always had that. Um, when you talk about having the curiosity about what the trainers were doing. 
that's the type of thing that becomes infectious. Like you can't, you can't put that away. You kind of want at that point when you think, I'm interested in what they're doing. You can't put that away. At some yeah. point, you're going to have to put the ride in the way, or will you? Like uh, I know, like I, is there? I, a, do, I do remember the training going well when I was 25 and thinking. God, well, I'm definitely going to write till I'm 30 now, anyway, because it's going good. Yeah. And now I'm 31, so. Um, 40's not that far away. <laughs> no, well, I, I can't. I won't be going. I won't be going that far now. But uh, look at while it's going okay, I'll I'll, I'll keep tipping away. But um, obviously, long term trend is what it's going to be all about. And, yeah. Um, it's You've had 15 other national hunt jockeys riding for you this season. Which is yeah, that's probably a bit more than normal. A lot, a lot of amateurs as well, like. Yeah, so. actually, yeah, I picked the wrong one a few days. Or well, mm. you've you've had 138 rides. Shane Mulcahy will say he's had 33. Andrew Ring 13, and Paul Cawley 7. Then down from that. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, we've had, we've had so many runners now. Like we, it's it's hard. To, I'm not worried anymore. But it was a time when you were like don't want to miss anything, and you had to write everything. But I have to. I look at it now more as a trainer. And thinking if Davy Russell or Barry Garrity or whoever, any of the top, there's loads of top jockeys out there, yeah. are available, put them up. And like the, the, the riding thing in Ireland, uh, as a national hunt especially, is it's so hard for some of the lads. I'm friends with most of them in the way room, and like the amount of talent that's there, the amount of talent that's there sitting, on the, sitting in there every day, in every race, there's as much talent sitting in there with no good ride. Yeah. There's as much talent on moderate to no good horses at the back of the field. And it's it's like That's it, one of the hardest things about it. Like. It's tough. It probably sent me training to be honest. Um I wanted Everton to from the very start I wanted to be champion jockey. I thought you could just turn up and yeah. I should be riding every race and you were getting disappointed if you weren't riding such a horse and you'd see some of the top jockeys winning on them and you're like, God, this is depressing like but uh, it probably started me off training and I was intrigued by the training how old, how old are you when you decided that, that, like is this 22 uh, is it? yeah I think it was about 22 and yeah. I took out a permit and I was very lucky to permit kind of four horses in training at any yeah. time I was okay. very lucky we, the parents owned it we owned a few horses and I said I'll, I'll go and train them I think three or four of them won that season and racked up a sequence some of them right. so that was like that was the break, really, that yeah. you needed. Because a lot of people would have been 22-year-old jockey decides he wants to, I mean, am I going to trust this person with my horse? Yeah, yeah. But you actually got yeah. the opportunity to somebody who did trust you. Yeah. And no, that, that's the bit that, that the success comes from. For sure. I've been very lucky with, <coughs> um, I have some great owners at the minute and I've had some super owners over the years. But There's uh, one of them ringing you now. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll give him a call back on the way home. <laughs> that's, a, that's another part of the game is, is actually, it's a whole other side to it as well. I could spend from, I could spend every hour of every day on the phone to yeah. If like, be fair, try to delegate a bit now, and and my owners are very understanding. Like some of them, they know I'm trying to juggle a lot, and to be fair, like a lot of them drop me a message, what's happening, and I come back to them or or my secretary or some of the lads in the air will update some of them, and I have a great bunch of owners that they, they they trust me and they let me at it, which is. Which is great, you know. Yeah, it's been a, a, an amazing kind of um, just an insight into how busy you must be. You must be pretty good at managing your time, because like <laughs> you know, about twelve different jobs. And he likes a bit of hurling as well. I often see him. In yeah, the park. Not yeah. so much. Th not so much this year. No. Now, <laughs> with tip being pretty we'll, we'll, we'll be back next year, Johnny. Don't worry. You're only you're only holding on to it there for a while. But uh, we don't have it anymore yeah, now. Oh, sorry. Yes, yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> Limerick are only holding on. It's good yeah. to see. Um, Racing people, a lot of them like can't see the wood from the trees, and that racing is racing and it racing is life. But it's good to see the likes of him and Noel Mead and Jim Bulger. Uh, you'll see them mad into the Gaelic games in the summer as well. And uh, Patrick Prendergast, we done lately. He yeah. went to the Ireland New Zealand game and said he uh, missed a couple of trains home. And um, it's great <laughs> yeah. to see Ken Condon loves the hurling as well, and it's great to see that as well because you can have the crack That's and it's probably released as well. Like it's great, to, like yeah, it's something something different to, to just like as you said there. Uh, horses racing is 24 7. Mm. Like, there's in the summer, especially, there's racing nearly every day. It's like it's tough going, and the evening meetings could be in the last race at nine o'clock and still have to be in the air at seven in the morning. Yeah, that was uh, like it seems like most trainers now have 
horses that are both flat and national hunter, it's definitely moving that way. That you can't just specialise in one anymore because yeah, for you're us, turning your back on a business basically. That's it, really, Jerry. I find for us the type of horse we have, uh, we do, we definitely do better. We definitely do better from May back around to Listall where you can target all the summer festivals and lots of race and either meetings, horses that, we have a lot of horses that do both and maybe maybe go a mile and a half in the flat and, and they jump a hurdle as well. Right. It opens up a ton of doors for the owners. If they get too high under one code and the, and the handicaps, they can they can turn to another something else, you know, and they might jump a fence and time. Yeah. I've, them type of horses have kept me on the road over the years, but um, still nice to have that that winter horse who can go through the mud in the graded race. That people uh, fall in love with. Yeah. The, ah, yeah. They're, they're, Especially in Ireland. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. We've, the last couple of years, actually, we've had a couple of really good flat horses, sprinters even, Titanons, Titanons Turbine, Allegio, um, Inish Man. Like, they've, like, if I was just a jumps trainer and hadn't targeted them, like, they, they won Premier Handicaps and there's a lot of good money on the flat handicaps. Yeah. Like there's plenty of fifty, a hundred grand races, you know. And it's like a, it's a lifetime career now for you. If you want it to be, you can train all the way up until your well, eighties. <laughs> that's how it's going to go. But you, like, no harm keeping those options open. Um, will you stay with us? We we'll, we'll talk a bit about the weekend's race, and you might because you must be well on top of this now after being. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, you're on the Wi-Fi on the plane on the way home, which is a great uh, boon these days when you're on a seven-hour flight and you can actually just go online. I yeah. know it's sad, but it's uh, yeah. But then the WhatsApp start arriving, and you're like. Ah, here. I know. I, I made know. the mistake. It's like actually, the, the blue Actually, ticks. I got an, Actually, Sarah kept saying to me for the whole week, uh, there was... Uh, Sarah? I, I, actually, my girlfriend, Sarah, she said... I was, I, in, I, was, I was on this mobile data all week and... Uh-oh. Well, Actually, first two days and she's like... I was like, does that cost money? And she's like, yeah. She's, I got badly sung for that before on the plane, but uh, the last time I came back from New York, the Wi-Fi went down after an hour and I was just like, ah, no. And I was, I was just, just about to tell them to turn the plane off and turn it on again, see who we go. Like, yeah, I was yeah. like, I can't have six hours in a flight. Like, that's just how, anyway, kind of sad. We got a big phone bill, all right. Sure. Yeah. Oh, the phone bill's going to be a disaster uh, unless you topped it out. Um, competition time. The Irish Racing Yearbook 2019 is available in all good bookshops for €24.95, which includes a whopping €1,250 worth of free admission to more than 70 race meetings throughout 2019. So the price of purchase is returned over 50 times. To avail of an offer for free postage on pre-Christmas delivery, just order your copy at irishracingyearbook.com um, by December the 19th. You've got a piece in it? I have with Billy Lee, yeah, who uh, sure has ridden for you a few times. Billy has ridden winners for me, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah um, top man. Really good rider. Another lad who uh, could conceivably be basically a top rider somewhere else. Just He's decided to stay in Ireland and he's just probably slightly below in terms of the opportunity he's gotten. I don't think he, he's ridden a one group one winner maybe um, but great guy from um, Limerick and uh, yeah that's it's well worth buying that there's loads of features in it we've got uh, three copies to give away to anybody who uh, drops us a comment on any of our streams or retweets the stream and uh, we'll close that competition uh, tomorrow so you've got an opportunity if you're watching this a little bit later on as well to uh, just retweet the stream and we'll be in touch with the winners um, hopefully in time for Christmas uh, he said promising something that he can't guarantee he could deliver on. There you go. I believe you. That'll learn me to shut up. <laughs> right, there, we're going to start with Navin. Um, that, well, actually, will we start with your bet this week? We'll start with Cheltenham. Um, should we start with maybe... Right, let's start with Cheltenham. Um, the Caspian Caviar Gold Cup Handicap Chase. Yeah, so it's the same course and trip uh, which did the Bet Victor uh, Gold Cup exactly four weeks ago and uh, Guitar Pete is very interesting for me. Desi Hughes used to train him. Um, Desi's uh, f- uh, probably a few years past now, but this horse is ace. It's kind of hard to believe. Uh, Desi had him. I think Sandra may have had him. He- he's come to Nicky Richards, and he won this race last year, and uh, that's always a massive plus in the Cheltenham race. But um, I was just looking at this before I came on. Nicky Richards, the trainer, his last seven runners going into today, six of them had won. And that's, in any man's language, like that's pretty impressive. So he ran a nice prep for this in that, that aforementioned race. Um, there's a kind of a renewal of rivalry here. Rather be fell travelling well in that race. And a lot of people will definitely lump on him. Um, but he's only three to one. And uh, I, I think he'll run a big race, Guitar Pete. Okay. Um Okay, so that was 155. That's on the 150. Saturday. Fortunately, it's only 15 runners, which means three <coughs> places rather than four. But look out for bookmakers who'll pay four places. Half past two at um, Cheltenham, the Albert Bartlett Novices Hurdle. Yeah, it's. Um, 
again, I don't think we've any Irish runner in the race, um, which is a, li a little bit disappointing. Um, but I, I think supremely lucky could be interesting here. Dan Skelton is another trainer who's uh, probably like apparently his facilities are unbelievable. He's he's um, he's he's come from a bit of a race <coughs> background, but he's he's a young trainer, obviously himself and his brother Harry. It's not like. Um, Roy the Rovers, where Roy the Rovers, he was the manager and the um, and the player. You're 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 doing both, but there's the a skeleton team, the brothers. Yeah, super job. Yeah, they're and um, the, the the skeletons are getting like they're kind of like Gordon Elliott now, and that they get an awful lot of horse from other yards, and and the betting straight away presumes that the horse going to improve like two stone. That doesn't always happen, but he's an excellent up and coming trainer. I think supremely lucky bolted up at so the last time. Well bred horse. Um, he's probably a bit of value in yeah. the race. I um, think they are super outfit Dan and Harry like the. You see Harry, I've been in England a few times riding and he's so focused and so dedicated and I think he's a top class rider. I think it works real well that they, they obviously, obviously their family, they get yeah. on or not, I'm sure they, I'm sure they have plenty of, <laughs> plenty of awards. They're too, honest with each other. But, but they definitely are a, a good combination. Are you, do you have to be completely obsessed with um, how all of these races are happening and how uh, each of these horses is performing so that you know when to enter and when not to, and how to how to manage yeah, your season. That's another that's another part of the job as well. Actually, we get a bit of help with that from 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 one or two, um, but that's another part of the job. There, like it's like, you pick the wrong race and you go up against yeah, the wrong horses. It's very easy place to logo at horse because generally they work from week or month to month. Right. You know, it's a very easy place them ones and where they can get in. But when you have uh, when you have a, a, a middle to decent, you know, sort of, like you have to make a plan then. Yeah. And uh, generally, once the, before they come off grass, you have a long term plan and work back. The other thing is, so for for the declarations are coming in before ten o'clock, you're online and you can mm. see with every refresh of the button <laughs> how many are in the race, how many are in the race. So then you're like kind of last minute. Oh, it's only three happy days. You load in yeah. and six other people are thinking the same thing. So they're actually yeah. nine runners now. Or I 10 think runners. I think actually. I hit the office around after second lot most morning at half nine. Uh, I can't leave there till five past ten really, um, and it's just refreshing, refreshing, and making sure everything is done right and going through the, the program for the entries. Then I'm back in for twelve o'clock. Just keep an eye on that as well. Um, to like get what, horses, to get horses in, or to see what other horses yeah, are. Yeah, you'd be just keeping an eye on keeping an eye on different things. But um, yeah, it's very hard to even while I was away this week. It was hard to it was hard to. Um, yeah. While I know they had everything done at home, and just you're checking, you're still checking to see an angle where there might be a small field or don't want to miss anything, you know. Yeah, but there's six million horses. How do you keep up to date with how everything's going? Yeah, well, I don't. <laughs> I let whatever's going on in someone else's yeah, but just looking after our own bunch, we'd like. I mean, I mean, literally, I'm, I'm well known for declaring horses at nine fifty nine, point. They must whatever. love you and hate your ride. Yeah, I, I, I think, they, I think they know like that. It could change my mind like six times between five to ten and ten o'clock. Sound like Willie Mullins. Um, I just like it is hard. That's actually one of the hardest parts of the job mentally. Because um, you second guess yourself. And then constantly. the phone is ringing about other things, and you're wondering. And then, like it's, it's good to get a bit of advice. Lately, in the last year or two, I'd often ask different jockeys, different work riders, even different lads in the yard or, or owners that I know are are clued into the form. What do you think? Is this? Uh, and I might still do something opposite, but yeah, it <laughs> still helps. Delegate. It yeah. does sound like that that whole process of stepping back from rides and realizing that there's loads of other talented jockeys yeah. out there as a trainer. Awesome. That you you just become more mature as this thing goes on. Yeah. That like you, I love I love using some of the lads sometimes, just for a bit of feedback. In your twenties, um, you can be a control freak about stuff. In your thirties, you kind of start to realize actually, you know what? There's a whole world of other people like great, that I can be the yeah. hive mind. No, it's, it's so good to get a bit of different feedback. Um, like and as well as that, like what you might think is right mightn't necessarily always be the right. You know, well, there you go. That's that. That's an important piece <laughs> of uh, yeah. the five past three at Cheltenham on Saturday. Um, this is another small field, is it? Eight. Yeah. This is a race that was crying out for Lorena, who uh, probably will be close to or every bit as good as Quavega and Annie Power, uh, mayor for Willie Mullins. Um, she has to take on the boys, which off the top of my head she hasn't done yet, or at least she hasn't done it in meaningful company. Um, they have a programme for mayors now that um, makes them kind of, the good ones can mop up races. But she doesn't run, unfortunately, in this race. Uh, Willie, I think he said the ground is just putting him off. Um, and it's, it's strange because some, some of the tracks in, in um, even Sandown last, last Saturday looked proper testing. 
Uh, Tremor looked pretty testing yesterday, but Cheltenham is good. Um, so I think that's why he said he didn't run. And this is a race of full of doubtful sorts, really. Brain power um, has had more problems than the three of us probably put together. And he's still... I don't know, he's back over hurdles now anyway. Vision de Flow used to be a Robert Tyner, interesting horse, uh, up and coming. We have a dream, he's been a little bit disappointing this season. And then you have Somerville Boy, who really was disappointing last. Oh, you yeah. know, he ran behind Sam Crow and Boover Dare. Um, I'm going to tip him up. He won the Supreme um, last year, but not with any confidence. It's not a betting race for me. Yeah, okay. So we've a couple of other quick races to talk about the Tara Handicap Hurdle and the Navin Hurdle at uh, Navin on Sunday. but. Uh, we do actually, um, it is time for us to get our tip in. We're aiming to add to the €1,485 Euros that we have for the Irish Injured Jockeys Fund so far with this week's charity bet from the tote.com. You can get Tote's best price guarantee on all Irish racing this weekend. See the tote.com for more. Last week's pick, Forge Meadow, didn't do the business at Cork, is what it's Very says disappointing. Here. Uh, we've got another €100 Euros to try again, though, this week. Uh, your bet is in Fairy House on Saturday, and it's Alpha Indy. It is. It runs in the uh, three o'clock, and uh, I mentioned about the skeletons where they get a horse from another yard, and the you know there's an, a general expectation that they'll improve them, and you're a bit of a victim of your own success, I think, in this regard because everyone just expects that, and they, it's like a failure if you can't improve the horses where the horse just might have plateaued. But um, I'm thinking Alpha Indy might actually be able to improve for the switch score now. That he's a seven-year-old going on eight. Um, his first run was in a point-to-point -point, uh, in Ballyarthur, where is that? Ballyarthur is in Cork, I think, is it? A lot of point-to-points in Cork. I'm not actually familiar with that track, but he was second to Nicole's Milan, who would be a fairly solid, reliable yardstick, and this is not a good race, and Gordon has entrusted Jack Kennedy for the ride. Um, the horse was trained in Britain by a guy called, well, H.J. Evans. I actually don't know who that is, to be honest. He doesn't have a bad strike rate, but... You'd imagine Gordon should be able to just improve him a little bit and his mark has come down and I think this horse is crying out to be backed. If not today, um, keep keep the faith and back in the next day. Okay, so keep an eye on him for the rest of the season. Uh, yeah, um, but I, I'd definitely back him tomorrow, 3 o'clock at Ferry House. You might lose, you, you know, but he, he, there's every chance this horse will be a well back winner. Okay, so uh, let's go to Navin then on Sunday. The other final two races that we're going to talk about today, the Navin Novice Hurdle at 12.30 and the Tara Handicap Hurdle. Um, so what type of horses are in the, the Novice Hurdle at well, Navin on a Sunday? Well, this is, to give you an example, Oscar as well, Boston Bob, Paulton Alexander, Briar Hill, No More Heroes, Bells Hill, Death <laughs> Duty, Next Destination. They're, I, I'd say they're, I think they were all grade one winners. Um, if not, mo all bar one of them won a grade one. Um, I've no doubt that Rhinestone will, well I think Rhinestone is the best of these long term. Um, McManus horses can be campaigned a bit, a bit with a view to Cheltenham in that, like he trains them. <laughs> like JP would for a, a handicap winner at Cheltenham, I think they win the grade two at Navin on Sunday. Um, and you know, fair enough, you know, I suppose I'd like a winner at Galway more than anywhere else to a degree because that's where I'm from. Like, But in any event, I think Rhinestone is very exciting going forward. Um, he his trainer Joseph O'Brien, like the last month has been just unbelievable for him. The amount of winners is just left, right, and centre. Uh, there was one, there was one Dundalk into a jump speed in the following day where he five about, winners, yeah, the, five uh, or six team. winners yeah. between in the space of sort of twenty hours in completely different codes. And um, now I know he he has the resources, but okay. he's also getting horses from other trainers and improving them. So like he's not. He, I know everyone will say like so. Dunica was asked, "What's your best asset?" and he said, "Being Aidan O'Brien's son." And that was like a typical Dunica Dona, Dona, Dona job at like he's. He's privileged, Joseph's privileged, but he's actually well able to train and he has facilities. Um, I think Rhinestone's very exciting and I will put him forward with the proviso that he might be trained to peak at Sheldon. Okay, so um, that's Rhinestone on Sunday at 12.30 in Navin. And then the one o'clock, um, it's a much bigger field, 22 runners in the handicap hurdle. Dennis, do you want to give the winner of this? You've done your homework? God, I see, well, I suppose it's not light for Ruby, but he's doing 10 six, but that's not light for him actually. He'd do 10 stone if he had to, but... Um, Cali do Manil. Cali do Manil, yeah. Um, just never, never discount one of Willie's with a lightweight and a handicap. And Ruby's picked this one. I think they have a few in it, have they? Um, this horse is interesting because it it ran behind its stable mate, Pleasure Dome, 
um, at Galway and it was a rare example of two horses from the one stable basically um, having a scrap in the middle of the race and losing the race for away in the other. west away in yeah, the west so away in the west Barry Garrity rode that probably couldn't believe his luck because he was on a horse that really shouldn't have won but because the other Boys two basically a long way out, yeah, yeah they slugged it out and uh I, I'd say it was Paul Townend and I don't know, is it Danny or David? Um, but I'd say they must have had words after us. They said, well, we, wh whoever was at fault here, um, we, this shouldn't have happened. But anyway. But is that, one, not, is that not just what happens? That, uh, but you can't, like, it's grand. You, you shouldn't give a horse a soft lead because then he has his way up front. But in Galway, if you're racing against each other a mile out, it's probably like running a marathon and going, like, in the middle of the marathon, going, like, an eight mile race pace, like, where you're going to be just banjoed by the end of it and that's what happened here but one of those horses was Cali Dumenil so I see, I see Ball Lark in the same race mm. Donny he's, he's running off 18 pounds very well in. He, he is but doesn't always work that way they have him in his favour but like uh, well, yeah <laughs> he, he has a mare right that yeah. basically this is one of the biggest flops of a trainer uh, you will ever sure. guess <laughs> she was basically like uh, over over fences this mare um, you can't call her that 40 was she won 42 was one she, won? she was basically like a if you wanted to call her, she's run. She won a grade two. Yeah. yeah so she's she's say if we're going to bring it to um, divisions in the NFL in Gaelic football, she's probably comfortable in Division One, and then she drops back to Division Four over hurdles, and she's not able to win. And why is yeah. that? Um, as a, she won a point to point, which are basically all offences. As a four year old, four turn of five, um, she could have been she could have been sold. And half the syndicate wanted to sell, half didn't. They left it up to me. I said not for that money. And brought her home that season. She couldn't win a hurdle race off high 80s, 90, 91 or two maybe. Um, put her away for the summer, disillusioned. Uh, brought her back, I won her out of chase. Finished second, won the next day. Won five, I think, last season. Must have won... Must have won over a hundred thousand and won a grade two and wow. listed black type from being basically probably yeah. no good. But her, her her handicap hurdle rating remained, which was now fifty pounds inferior. Um, <laughs> so she started in Wexford this year. I think she was one to two, Johnny. Was four she? to six. Four to six. She went off. Now possibly needed that run. She finished second, beating ahead. Um, looked a good opportunity for her in Cork last week, but two and a half miles around a flat track. She was actually on her head most of the way and doesn't jump a just doesn't jump a hurdle like she springs a fence. Right. It's Madness. amazing the yeah. difference. It's it's amazing. She's, she's just a three mile national hunt mare that hurdles are just happening, everything's happening faster, faster. Yeah. It's almost like uh, there's thought as opposed to it being in the flow state. Yeah, I've seen it over and over though, but never a gap like that sounds a lot. Like it's incredible. Fifty though, pounds sounds sounds like you should like you will win but yeah. I have seen 30 pounds turned over over and over you probably have too yeah right? absolutely it's just it's, it's a different discipline like because you're going quicker and uh, you're, you're probably quite cumbersome over your hurdles as well because you're just not used to jumping them yeah, and again, if you're going over a shorter trip, obviously that just makes it a, a lot harder. But it is surprising. I tipped her last Sunday, but I I wasn't surprised she was beaten either because I've yeah. I've seen it so many times. I'd back a horse well in over fences relative to his hurdle mark any day of the week. But if you're backing a horse that's theoretically thrown in because of what he's done over fences, it's just not the same over hurdles. It's no, like no. they're often just they look they're often outpaced quite just quickly as well. Horses, yeah, 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 just too big for that job. Back to this, you don't like, or you're, it sounds like you, you'll you be concerned about the short price and uh, a horse like Baldock just on the basis of that, and you do like Cali de Manil this time. Is that fair? Am I, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. PJ Vaughan riding for Gordon on Baldock, you know about him? I can't say. I've yeah, so he must be another new up and come yeah. rider, Damon yeah, Five. Sure. Um, yeah. Cali de Manil is very interesting. I would say as well, elusive theatre for Stuart Crawford, who own Malone Road um, or certainly train Malone Road and Gordon got Malone Road who's the most exciting bumper horse probably in Ireland this season for a few seasons maybe uh, the Crawford Elliot um, switch but Elusive Theatre isn't badly handicapped she'll be a big prize Alright good stuff Dennis thanks for joining us um, you. you're en route to Dundalk for uh, a few uh, Yeah we've three runners um, Give us a winner now for the well, Christmas I've only, I've only one solid chance to be honest uh, Aminat Aminat you probably know Get the six sorry. Uh, I think he will. He's got five and three quarters at Navin, uh, running on over five last week. Uh, not certain, not certain to be honest, Johnny. But at the same time, drawing seven of eight is not ideal either. Uh, but he drops in and he arrives late, and um, he's in good nick. He'll, he'll be close, but uh, he'll need a bit of luck to win. All right, yeah. good stuff. Thanks. Winner for, for Christmas. 
Winner for Christmas. Uh, he's asking all the questions, isn't he, Jerry? Uh, Trying to promote uh, the show. Philly ran very well last weekend uh, in defeat. I was thrilled with her. Even though we had a winner last weekend, I was really thrilled with my henna. Uh, over the wrong distance behind... Um, behind Willie Smear. Uh, no, you, you tipped up... Um, Oh, uh, he's in the same race. Uh, oh, the the beginners, the yeah. made the the chase. Made three, yeah. Um, she made all the running after she she was the, yeah. The she, horse that won the previous day when town end. I don't know how he won it. Uh, she's a French. That's name, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so my yeah, henna my, my, well. my henna will will go somewhere at Christmas and we'll be we'll be hoping hoping for the best. Yeah. We'll keep an eye on my henna then. Yeah. Good stuff. Thanks very much for that, uh, Johnny. Thank well, you as well. Thanks. Anytime, there. Yeah. That is the end of Friday Night Racing this week. Hope you enjoyed it as ever. You can uh, drop us a text or a comment wherever you're watching this live, or of course you can text the radio show on five three one zero six and we'll pick that up as well. Don't forget to enter our competition as well, and we'll see you next week. Good luck. Friday Night Racing on Off the Ball. And they're off. Brought to you by Go Racing. Plan your day at the races at GoRacing.ie.